Hey everyone, my name is Tim, and in this video I want to show you a few techniques that are helpful for editing an interview in KineMaster. Welcome to One Million Cups, our one year end. So my name is Christina Wasson. I work as the Project and Marketing Manager here at the Eau Claire area EDC. I am one of the many volunteers on the organizing team uh, that came together within our community to form uh, and manage the Eau Claire chapter of One Million Cups. One Million Cups is in about 160 communities, and these communities listen to presentations from entrepreneurs. Uh, they learn more about what's going on in their community, and they get to connect and network. The presentations are very short. They're only six minutes long. They can be as formal or as informal as the presenter would like. <laughs> And this is followed by an open Q&A session. We ask everybody who presents at the end of their presentation, what can we as a community do for you? And as you can imagine, the answer varies widely. Whatever the answer may be, the community rallies around that person. We want that other person to succeed. We want that other small business to succeed. When you're doing an interview, that means you'll have to record audio. And with professional microphones, that often means an XLR cable. Since you can't run that XLR cable directly into your phone, you'll have to consider some other hardware options. And one of those is a portable audio recorder. What I've got next to me is the Tascam 60D Mark II. The type of recorder you use doesn't matter too much as long as you can record the files to an SD card and then transfer those files to your phone. I'll show you what that looks like on my Android phone and on an iPhone. To transfer my audio clip, I'll swipe down from the top of the screen. Then I'll tap Lexar USB Drive. I'll tap Music, then I'll long press on my audio clip to select it. Then I'll open the menu at the top right of the screen and select Copy To. You can see that I've already created some folders for this project, so let me show you how that works. From the menu at the top right, select New Folder, then give it a name. Then I'll tap Copy. Now the iPhone cannot transfer audio files from an SD card, so you'll have to transfer to your computer first, then use iTunes to transfer the file to your iPhone. In iTunes, click the Device button, then click File Sharing. Choose KineMaster from the list of apps, then click Add File. Choose your audio file from the SD card. Then I'll click Done. And you can see at the top of the screen that the file is transferring. Once the file is transferred, you'll have to synchronize your audio and video. Here I have the video clip from the interview which has audio recorded in camera. And what I want to do is add the audio from the external audio recorder. To do that, I'll tap Audio, then Folders. Then I'll select the folder I just made. I'll tap on my audio clip and then tap the plus icon to add it to my project. I'll mute my video clip so that I can just listen to the external audio. I know from listening to this clip previously that the interview starts at about 50 seconds. And that is the beginning of the interview, so I'll go back to about 50 seconds. Then I'll select my audio, and I'll trim to the left of the playhead. Then I'll long press and drag this audio to the beginning of the timeline. Then I'll unmute my video clip, and I'll play this back to see how the two audio sources align. You can hear that the external audio clip comes in a little too late, so I will adjust the in point and then slide the clip over. So, my name is Christina Lawson. I work as the project and marketing manager. So, you can hear from the slight echo that the timing is not exactly perfect, but it's very close. So, what I'll do now is mute my video clip again 
and I'll see how the timing looks. So my name is Christina Lawson. I work as the project and marketing manager here at the Oprah Area EDC. And that timing actually looks really good. What I want to do now is join the audio and video together by exporting the entire interview. That way, I won't have to worry about keeping the two lined up as I edit. Now, if you wanted to skip manually syncing audio and video, I wouldn't really blame you. But did you know that KineMaster has the ability to record from external microphones? Let me show you how. To enable recording audio from external sources, go into your KineMaster settings. Scroll down until you see Audio Recording Source. Then choose Voice. Now even though KineMaster can record audio from external sources, we still have the problem of getting that XLR input into your phone. And the best solution I found for that is a mobile audio interface. What I have here is the iRig Pro Duo. It allows for two XLR inputs and comes with a USB and lightning cable to connect either your Android phone or your iPhone. Once you have your interview recorded, you can start to put together your rough cut in KineMaster. So what I have here is essentially the rough cut of the interview. I've taken all the best sound bites and arranged them to help tell the story. But what I'm left with are a bunch of jump cuts. A typical way to cover these jump cuts is with B-roll, or alternative footage, that you shot to help support the story. A good way to add B-roll is with a video layer. Remember that video layers are only supported on devices that are powerful enough to use this feature. I'll tap Layer, Media, and I've set up an event folder. I'll tap to select a clip from this folder. When I'm adding B-roll, I usually want the clip to appear full screen. An easy way to do that is to tap the split screen icon, then tap here for full screen. If you long press on the full screen option, you can set this as your default. Now the next time I add a video layer, it will come in full screen right away. Let's trim this clip and then add another one. I'll tap Layer, Media. I'll go back to my Event Video folder and choose another clip. As you can see, this clip came in full screen right away. With B-roll comes the opportunity to mix in natural sound, making use of L and J cuts. Let's take a look at this example. Right, and we want that other person to succeed. We want that other small business to succeed. With an L cut, the image from the first clip cuts before the audio. Let me show you how to set it up. I'll select the clip, then tap the scissors icon and select Extract Audio. Then I'll adjust the out point of this clip. Now you can see that the video cuts before the audio, and the audio overlaps the next clip. Right, and we want that other person to succeed. We want that other small business to, to succeed. Looking at the video and the audio from the first clip, you can see that it forms an L shape. That's where the L cut gets its name. So now let's take a look at a J cut. I'll just undo this. And this time I want to extract the audio from the second clip. I'll tap the scissors icon and then select Extract Audio. Then I'll adjust the end point of this clip. And then I want to drag the audio forward so that the end of the video matches the end of the audio. And now you can see that the video and audio from this clip form the shape of a J. Right, and we want that other person to succeed. We want that other small business to succeed. All right, if you wanted to fade in that applause sound over the interview, you can use the volume envelope. Select the audio clip. Then tap the audio envelope icon. I'll set a keyframe near the start of the video 
by tapping the plus icon. Then I'll scrub to the beginning of this audio and lower the level. And we want that other person to succeed. We want that other small business to succeed. So that's how you can mix natural sound using L and J cuts in KineMaster. Okay, one last thing I can show you that's really common with interviews is a lower third graphic. To add in the lower third graphic, I downloaded it from the KineMaster Asset Store. To insert it into the project, choose Layer, Overlay. And there you can see the simple lower third option in my overlay menu. If you don't have this graphic installed, tap the Get More button to go to the Asset Store. Then choose Text and Titles from the menu. And here you'll find the simple lower third option. Once you have it installed, tap the X to go back to the overlay menu. Then tap on Simple Lower Third, and you can choose one of the four designs for your graphic. I chose the first one. Then I'll tap the back arrow to go to the Options panel, and this graphic animates onto the screen, so scrub forward a little bit so that you can see the text. Then tap Settings, and tap on the text to replace it. First, I'll type the name. On Android, you can tap on the letter A to change the font. Changing the font is not supported on iOS at this time. Then I'll type the title. Again, I'll change the font. And tap OK. Tap on the white circles to bring up the color picker and change the colors of the different elements in the graphic. I kept mine white. You can resize and reposition the graphic on the screen. Since my lower third area was a little busy, making the text hard to read, I decided to also add a handwriting layer as a background. I'll tap Layer, Handwriting. I chose the rectangle tool and picked an orange color from the color picker. Then I drew a rectangle over the lower third graphic. Now I'll tap over to the Options panel, and in the Action bar, I'll use this menu to send the rectangle to the back. Next, I'll lower the opacity, then I'll add an In Animation. I chose Wipe Up, and for the Out Animation, I chose Wipe Down. Then I want to position this handwriting layer on the timeline so that it animates on before the text and stays on until the text animates off the screen. I can check the timing of the animation by scrubbing through the timeline. That looks pretty good, so I'll play it through. So there you have a quick and easy lower third graphic. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful and thanks for watching.